Hello and welcome in today's lecture. So today we are going to talk about what is frame parts and its types. So this remains one of the important uh, aspect of dispensing optometry as one should be very much aware of the different types of frame and the different types of parts which are associated with it. So the naming and everything which are generally done is very important and what type of material and what type of a frame is actually called that has to be understood very well. So let's start with the video. So basic parts when we say a frame can be divided into two basic parts which are called namely as the frame front and the temple. So what frame front does it is the part which holds the actual ophthalmic lenses in place whereas the temple is the part which connects the frame front and places it properly with the support of your ears. So what are the parts which are into the frame front? So when we see frame front closely uh, these are the eye wire or the rim which are actually responsible for holding the lens onto its place whereas the part which connects both the eye wire or rim is actually called as the bridge. The portion of the eye wire which is actually placed on or rather is in contact with the nasal crest and the nasal part is called as the nose pad. Uh, these are the shields which are basically used to attach the end pieces of your uh, uh, frame front in particular place and end pieces are the point where temple is actually screwed or rather we say bolted onto that place. Coming on to the temple, so when we say the temple it has basically the part of called a shield. So shield is the metallic part which is basically having the barrels or the double hole. So these double hole are nothing but they align with the end piece uh, uh, barrel and then a screw can be placed here to lock it onto a proper place and with an opening and closing mechanism. So the portion where shield is present that is called as the butt portion and after the butt portion up till the bend or rather from where the bend starts that much area of the temple is called as the shaft or a shank. The point from where the bend till the end of your temple is called as the ear piece because here it is actually attached with your ear very closely. So these are the basic uh, nomenclature which are used into the frame front and temple. So let's move on and see what are the different types or basic parts. The first one is uh, construction of a frame. So when we say construction of a frame that simply means different types of frame how they are constructed and their name in. So before uh, that we should understand uh, something which is your different types of frame. So here uh, two main types which are actually called in frame are one is called as mounting. So mounting frames are nothing but here the lens is being mounted onto a frame. The term mounting means it is uh, the frame is directly inserted into the lens. So they drill some hole or rather some small openings which will connect the frame with a screw or a rivet to keep it in place. Whereas there are frames in which the lens are inserted. So these are the frame with the eye wire or rim. So in which what will happen the lens will be uh, cut it or shaped into a particular uh, uh, structure uh, or a shape and then it will be inserted into this frame uh, within this uh, groove which is present. So here what happens this frames actually have a lens which has to be inserted within the groove whereas in this kind of frame there is no eye wire or a rim if you see. So the part of the frame are directly mounted onto the lens itself. So starting with the different types of frame depending on to their construction. The first one is called as the plastic frame. The one which are nowadays very much common. So one of the most commonest frame which we all know. So plastic frames are nothing but these are made up of plastic material. So now when we see the term plastic it is a very broad term or a very a huge uh, type of different materials can be taken into it. It could be cellulose acetate butyrate. It could be nylon. It could be polyamide. It could be optile. There are many other different types of plastic material which are generally 
used there is also a new material which is called as your TR90 so these all are your type of plastic frames if in plastic frame typically we see the complete frame is made up of plastic uh, some of the frame do have a in reinforcement which is generally in the form of a metal uh, wiring which is inside the temple to give it more support and to able to bend the temple uh, from the bend to give it a proper uh, comfort for the patient coming on to the next type of frame that is called as the metal frame now these are one of the old classic frames where the complete frame is made up of metal except the place where the nose pad are the nose pad are generally made up of plastic or uh, silicon whereas the end piece cover are also made up of plastic so what happens here the complete frame the eye wire the bridge the temple everything is made up of metal that's why it is called as metal frame now also in metal frame there are many materials which are used which could be ranging from your stainless steel then your alloys then nickel magnesium titanium and all other metals which are generally hypoallergic so these are the metals which are generally used in uh, metal full frames the next type of frame which we are going to talk about is nylon cord frame now nylon cord frame is nothing but here what happens the it is uh, basically it could be either a metal or a plastic frame but what happens there the frame is only half okay the lower part of the frame is not present rather in place of a frame a nylon cord is actually used to keep the lens into place so there is a groove which is uh, uh, made into the lens and the uh, nylon is tightened within that groove to keep the lens hold within this aperture so only half of the uh, eye rim is actually present here and the rest is supported by a presence of nylon cord now the advantage of nylon cord is nothing but it here it gives support to the lens at the same time here half of the weight is reduced the lower uh, rim weight which is here is actually being reduced with the help of a nylon cord also cosmetically it gives a semi rimless finish so only the upper portion of the frame is present that's why the other name for nylon cord frame is also called as supra frames the next type of frame is combination frames now combination the term combination is simple to understand here there will be a combination of plastic as well as metal so what happens uh, we generally see here is that the upper portion of the frames are made up of plastic whereas the lower portion of the frame is made up of a uh, steel that is that the eye wire rim the lower portion is made up of steel also the bridge and some part of the temple can be also be made of a uh, metal so here there is a combination of both metal and plastic that's why it is called as a combination frame the next type of frame which we see is called as the half eyes frame now half eyes frame are nothing but these are reading glasses generally so some typical features of half eye frame uh, is that the uh, height of your uh, aperture is quite less because it is only used for reading uh, also they are called as half eye frames because of the fact that they are kept at half a distance between the nose and the eyes now why is it done so that uh, while looking down it will give you a clear aperture for the reading vision whereas when you look straight you can see without the glasses right in front of the uh, patient's view so in this what happens only reading glasses are generally prescribed for this patients who only have a reading prescription and no distance prescription so what they do is they keep this frame a slightly lower uh so that what happens the patient can look straight without the glasses and read with the glasses the next type of frame which we have is called as the rimless frame or also called as three piece frames so here what happens there is no actual presence of a rim or i rim or i wire so only there are three pieces which are present so there is only a bridge and two temples so that's why it is also called as three piece or rather the rimless frames the next uh, is your types of rimless so even in rimless there are some of the types the one which is uh, in right in front of you is called as a semi rimless frame because what happens as an appearance it gives that there is a supra frame which is present here but that is just behind the lens and not actually supporting the lens it is just uh, giving an appearance of a presence of frame but actually it is not giving any support whereas the lens is directly mounted with the help of these two screws so these two screws are directly mounted onto the lens itself and they are completely attached onto these two points 
Also, there is one more type of rimless which is not found more nowadays because of its uh, tendency to break quite a lot. So these type of uh, rimless are called as the new mount frames because here what happens, you see a frame which is present here, but actually this is uh, just for appearance and no support is actually given because the complete lens is actually withhold onto this one screw which is found into the nasal part and uh, that has a drawback that it was quite oftenly that the lens starts to start shaking or rather getting a rocky feeling and the patient used to have discomfort. Also there were very uh, high chances of breaking in this type of lenses. Coming on to the next part that is called as the bridge area. So here we are going to discuss about the different types of bridges which are present. So starting with the first type. So first type is your plastic bridges. So entire plastic frames we have different type of bridges uh, with different manufacturers so the first type of bridge which was seen is your saddle bridge so if you see this image here it is simply a saddle kind of structure which is present so there is no uh, other stru uh, structure or other protrusion present here it is simply a saddle uh, which is in between these two eye wires so what happens here the nasal crest or uh, lies or rather is in contact with the frame whereas the weight is completely distributed all over the saddle or all over the crest and the uh, both the side parts of your nose the second type is called as the modified saddle bridge so the modification which was done after the saddle bridge was simply to increase the area of the side of the saddle so that more area is in contact with the frame and more even distribution of weight can be done so here what happens if you see there is no protrusion here in the normal saddle bridge but in modified saddle bridge what happens you see an extra area of the bridge coming uh, towards the patient's face uh, that is called as the your modified saddle bridge the final type is called as your keyhole bridge so here what happens uh, there is a keyhole appearance which is seen now why is this done because here many times what happens when the frame sit onto your uh, nasal crest and completely packs up because of the pervaporation it starts fogging onto both the nasal sides whereas in keyhole type of bridge what happens there is space for the air or rather the gases to come uh, in and out so here the pervaporation and all is less and the patient have a lesser amount of discomfort here so also here what happens the crest is not in contact with the bridge the complete uh, po uh, portion of the weight is onto both the sides of your nose the next type of uh, bridges are the metal bridges so in metal bridges the first one is your padded bridge so here what happens uh, the bridge actually has two screw points where your uh, plastic pads can be attached and these plastic pads are uh, resting onto the nose to distribute all the weight directly onto that point of contact so here nose pads or plastic pads are actually used uh, to attach onto the bridge which uh, act as a, a resting point and to distribute the weight the next is called as the comfort uh, plastic bridge uh, comfort bridge so here what happens if you see here there were uh, extra points where the pads were attached but in comfort bridge it is nothing but a plastic bridge which is attached onto the bridge part so here it distributes the weight more evenly as compared to the padded bridge because padded bridge has only a very small amount of area to be in contact with the nose whereas in your modified or rather the comfort bridge it is more evenly distributed also this point is co in contact with the nasal crest and more amount of area is in contact so more evenly the weight distribution is found here the final type is your metal saddle bridge these are the uh, early kind of frame which were used nowadays very less used because they have a drawback that they leave a mark over the nasal crest because of the metal saddle these are generally used into frames which are library or rather the reading uh, kind of lenses which had lesser aperture and lightweight coming on to the next is your construction of the end piece so now end piece is the portion where your temple and the frame front meets so in end piece first is the type of plastic end pieces so in plastic end pieces it was actually uh, classified with the 
point of contact or the angle which is made between the frame front and the temple in that the first one is called as the mitre plastic end piece so in that what happens the frame front and the temple are meeting at an angle of 45 degree to one another so if you see what will happen that the temple is not actually uh, coming up till the front or the frame front uh, they are meeting at an angle of 45 degree so this is what is called as your mitre end piece the second one is called as the uh, your butt end piece so in butt end piece what happens the angle between the frame front and the temple is at 90 degree and the temple is much inside to the frame front as compared to your mitre so in mitre end piece what happens the temple are more away from the uh, central part of your uh, what we say the frame front whereas here the butt end piece are slightly inside as compared to the uh, mitre end piece and the final one is your uh, turn back end piece so in turn back end piece what happens the frame front and the temple are making uh, angle of 180 degree to one another or rather they are into a straight line so if you see here there is the frame front is actually bent back so that's why it is called as a turn back end piece so the frame front itself is turned back and the temple attaches straight right onto it so this is what is called as a turn back end piece commonly nowadays we see these kind of or rather the turn back end piece uh, in the common uh, type so these are very less seen now but and mitre end piece the most common type of end piece nowadays is a turn back end piece now coming on to the next type that is called as the metal end piece so in metal end piece we have uh, actually two types the first one is called as the again metal turn back end piece so it is similar to what we already saw uh, there is an extension part which is soldered to the frame front and is turned back to attach right at a 180 degree angle or a straight line with the temple and there is another type which is not actually an end piece it is called as a continuous piece now these are nothing but this is a flimsy or rather a very thin wiry kind of uh, temple which is directly attached onto the lens itself so they are also called as flexible one piece commonly seen into your rimlesses and very less it is seen into your full frames uh, these are uh, commonly seen in the brands such as Silhouette and uh, other ODC. So these are the uh, rimless frame which are also called as flexible frame. The next type is called as the construction of your temple. So now temple what all different types of temple we have will go through it. So before we go through the type of temple as I have already explained about the different parts. The first part is your double hole or rather the point. Uh, where the screw will be attached with the barrel holes of your uh, frame front also there is a part which is called as the shield or the metal pin which is attached with the temple so as to hold this particular part into place this complete portion is called as the butt portion the length from butt portion till bend is called as the shaft and from bend up till the end is called as the earpiece so these are the different uh, type of your uh, temple which we commonly see the first one is called as the skull temple uh, so in skull temple these are the commonest variety of the temple which we generally see uh, the main thing here if you see is that the starting point would be much more thicker and as you reach toward the bend it will become thinner and again it becomes thicker at the back this is basically that this can be again modified the bend can be increased or decreased so as to give comfort to the patient the second one is called as the library temple now these temples are quite straight uh, because many people have problem about the curling of your uh, temple behind the ear and they give a particular so library temples are generally used with uh, frames such as half eye frame and all because there uh, it is not required the frame to continuously be gripped or attached onto the back of your ear and they are also used at a lower eye position as compared to the other uh, types next is the convertible temple now convertible temples are nothing but here the temple can be bent to any shape according to the uh, patient's requirement so in bent temple if you see it is uh, again similar to your skull but slightly more rounded at the end so this can be bent more or less depending on to the patient's uh, length between the frame front and the bend so accordingly convertible temples are nothing but it is quite modified or rather can be used 
very easily for patients such as the pediatric or patient who have a continuous uh, growth or rather a pa patient into the phase of quick growth so as per the requirement you can increase or decrease the uh, length of your shaft and the patient can have a uh, better comfort in terms, terms of temple next is you are called as the riding bow or rather the riding bow temple now in riding bow temple what happens it is generally seen in the plastic so initially it is your plastic start or the shaft is completely made up of plastic and at the end there is a wiry structure which could be made up of a very flexible metal to curl around your uh, ear so that there is more good amount of grip and lesser pressure onto the ear so these are generally seen into the plastic frames and uh, finally the comfort cable now comfort cable is uh, similar to what we saw in the end of your riding bow here the same material is used from the start of the temple till the end so here the metal is uh, a bit flexible one which is curled around behind your back the only difference between riding bow and comfort cable is in riding bow the initial part is plastic and the end is a uh, flexible metal whereas in comfort cable the complete one is your metal cable coming on to a classic rimless front so now this uh, remains one of the most important point because in rimless there is no particular such uh, eye wire or anything present so a classic rimless front is something like this so this is the area which is called as the strap area where the mounting is actually done so here if you see there are some of the parts this part is called as the ear or the tongue which will get inserted right over the lens behind this there is a screw or a rivet point which is present which will tighten itself onto the lens so to uh, allow this to do it we drill a hole and then put the ear or the tongue right over it now once you are done with that this could actually rock through and fro if there is no support given for that point the shoe or shoulder is responsible to keep or hold the lens intact onto its actual position now if this is a very rigid part the lens if for, for example if it rocks a bit also the sharp points of the shoe can actually crack or chip the lenses to avoid that a part of a spring is actually placed here so that the edges of this metal shoe should not uh, harm the edge of your rimless so this is what we see a classic rimless front or uh, the fitting area or the mounting area thank you for your patient listening to the complete video i hope this video helped you to understand the different types and parts of frame uh, please do subscribe our channel for more videos on optometry and different subjects on optometry thank you and goodbye